So there are a number of use cases that we are solving for the cloud data center that we are seeing uh, out there. So it starts with memory expanders. Uh, memory expanders, today, there are two DIMMs per channel, as everyone knows. Uh, but when you, uh, when you add a second DIMM, you don't get any more bandwidth. So it's, you don't get any more bandwidth, but you do get more capacity. If you want bandwidth, that's a problem that uh, the amount of adding more DIMMs cannot solve. Uh, with CXL expanders, what we are seeing is as the memory bandwidth is growing, uh, or as the memory speeds are growing, a lot of the CPU vendors are having to go to one DPC or one, one DIMM per channel. But now you do need more bandwidth, uh, you need more capacity and bandwidth uh, for the host processors, and CXL expanders allow that to occur. So with CXL, we can then add, you know, this example is showing four, four links to the XPU, and XPU here is defined as a CPU, a GPU, or a DPU, right? There the are different uh, versions in the market of terminology. And this gives you more memory expansion, and it also gives you more memory bandwidth. <clears throat> so now you get the same capacity in these two examples, but you get the bandwidth and utilization up. Okay, then, the, then apart from expansion, the next, uh, next solution set that we are, uh, we are seeing that there's a big demand in the market is for CXL pooling. In, in this case, we're showing, okay, the pooling, again, can be a pooled memory between a CPU, a DPU, or a GPU. And oh, we, you know, there's a lot of DRAM that is underutilized today. Uh, you see a lot of different articles and analysis done around that, that how much DRAM is underutilized in the cloud data centers. And, also, the other problem that's happening is how do you scale memory that's independent of uh, a given device? Uh, uh, even the scaling the memory technology to different memory technologies uh, without the CPU actually having to control the uh, DRAM controllers for that type of memory controllers, memory devices. Okay, so, you know, and latency, as we have discussed uh, throughout uh, this morning is very critical in order to solve that. So instead of, so one way to do it is instead of having a switch in the middle and then putting memory on the other side of the switch, which adds a hop, is to actually have a combined device that does a, basically a CXL pooling device that has memory directly connected to it, which allows basically a one, hop, one NUMA hop or lower latency uh, to any of the other GPUs or CPUs out there. Okay. The other way to do it, if you want to do it at a larger scale, where okay, you have more, what's more important is getting a larger scale and maybe slightly less important for latency, and you also want to maybe mix and match different types of uh, devices around that, that that are shared and not just memory, then you would have a CXL switch. Um, and under the switch, we can then have you know, either a pooling device that for further expansion, you can have other switches, you can have I.O. expansion under, underneath that CXL switch that can be shared. So we, we are also, okay, so, the other thing, so, so far we've talked about memory. Um, the other, other use cases of CXL that are evolving that we see is that uh, acceleration on CXL links. <clears throat> so w one of the, uh, you know, um, my colleague from NVIDIA was talking about is one of the uh, bottlenecks, you know, is that, okay, do you have to go back on the same uh, slow link back, or even if it's a fast link, relatively slow link back to the CPU uh, after you process something in an accelerator of some sort. You can also then take that one step forward and say, okay, we're gonna add the accelerator into the memory, CXL memory controllers themselves so that it can, some of the data can be processed locally where the memory is directly connected uh, and then send the final results back to the CXL accelerator. Uh, these can be cache coherent. Uh, they can be doing things like uh, analytics, you know, machine learning, searching. Uh, it, we see as this as improving efficiency and good for, t, uh, for TCO in, the, in various use cases in the data center. And CXL 3.0 actually enhances some of these use cases that we can offer with, even with 2.0. Okay. Uh, so that's... That's for acceleration. Now you can do the similar thing with I.O. acceleration. So you can get uh, basically an I.O. device or, or a NIC or a DPU connected over CXL to again to a XPU device and get similar benefits as I talked to, uh, talk to with memory. <clears throat> a 
Okay, so disaggregated memory. So in a fully composable system, you would, you would try to get, you know, basically the right amount of CPU, the right amount of memory, the right amount of storage uh, assigned to a given task that, that, is, that is being done in the compute cores. And what CXL does is allows us to basically dynamically assign that. Uh, and how, how much storage is required, how much memory for a given number of cores that are out there um, uh, connected to it. It also gives you, as I said, more, bam, more, more bandwidth per core, uh, which is then optimized, uh, which is, you know, as you see uh, more and more announcements from all the different CPU vendors, the core counts per socket are growing. Uh, they seem to be growing uh, faster than the, definitely the DRAM bandwidth can keep up towards those sockets. Uh, with CXL, we can get you know, more bandwidth going in because it's more of a serial link as long as you can keep the latency low. And, and then it can optimize the uses of those cores uh, much better than otherwise possible. And with near memory compute, as I said, we can then solve the, the problem of even getting higher performance from each of the cores that are being used in the XPU by, by moving some of the compute down closer to the memory. So we see CXL as disrupting the cloud data center architectures going forward, and I think we're just at the start of it at this point. It's, you know, there are lots of ideas out there. There are, uh, there are a number of demos going on. You know, people have been able to achieve things with CXL 1.1 hosts that were really planned for 2.0. Uh, and then there's 2.0 host coming out, which will then, uh, and then devices will show up with you know some 3.0 features. So, um, and I thought I think the the innovation of this team as a whole um, and the community are it's going to accelerate going forward uh, and find solutions that none of us are thinking about today and how how is how CXL is going to be used in the future. So. Our goal is to be able to provide comprehensive end-to-end -end CXL solutions. Uh, and you know, we see that the use case, uh, as our end customers um, sort of evolve in their thinking, uh, we, uh, we want to be able to support basically all, all types of use cases uh, w with the solutions that we will be providing in the future. Uh, that includes expanders, pooling, switching, accelerators, uh, but not limited there. They lost, you know, we, we see a lot of demand as the use cases evolve that standard devices may or may not be able to satisfy everybody. Um, and in those cases, then, we, you know, there will be a lot of different custom compute. There'll be DPUs, the electro-optics, uh, the retimers required. Not, yes, they have to keep the latency low, but there are some system solutions that will require the retimers. And also, as... Uh, SSD controllers evolve, we see some uh, role of CXL uh, in those controllers in the future also. And it's a start of a very, uh, a growing market. Um, it's it's uh, by no means, you know, uh, of course CXL 3.0 was just released today, but there'll be, um, 4.0 has already started. Uh, there are devices that are already doing, uh, you know, functionality that are beyond the spec and then the specs will catch up to those devices um, and use cases will uh, keep growing from here on on. All right. All right. So we see CXL is, a disrupt, is disrupting the cloud data center architectures. Um, it's uniquely positioned to enable end-to-end. -end, uh, we... we uh, are basically going to be providing solutions that are really uh, solving the end-to-end -end CXL use cases, starting from the data center and then going beyond that. Uh, and, and the reason for all the investment going into this is that there, there, is, a, a, there is a business cases for, for a multi-billion dollar opportunity that's out there uh, uh, for the whole industry. Uh, you know, CXL pooling, although is really targeted to CXL 2.0 hosts, uh, but in our booth in, uh, in 607, you will see us already pooling with 1.1 hosts. These are, of course, prototypes uh, in order for it to be uh, pooling with a 1.1 host, but 
it shows that th there are ways to uh, get that started, get the ecosystem growing around that so that it can, it can be proved out. And then as 2.0 host comes out, then it can really scale from there. So I will leave you with this picture, but see if there are any questions. But basically, uh, you know, right now we, we, we have, what we are going to show as pooling is basically two hosts connected to us, uh, multiple CXL controller devices. Um, and then those, those can share the, you can reallocate memory from one host to the other host uh, around that. Okay, that's, any questions? Out of uh, curiosity, I, I noticed that you have SSD controllers over CXL. I'm kind of wondering why you would attach NAND to what's being used for DRAM and everything else. You're introducing sure. slower devices into this super fast bus. Right. So. We, we see that going into a little bit into the future. We don't see that happening uh, immediately. But going into the future, we do see some applications coming out where the, the uh, sort of the use case on how CXL is used and how the software layers are using in the host, uh, at the host level, that there will be some value in the future for it to sort of have SSD behind it. But it's not, it, it is one of the late, later phases of CXL we see uh, as far as the use case is concerned. No more questions? Then. So you mentioned that uh, people go is, so very quickly, you, you mentioned that uh, 3.0 improves uh, the possibility of uh, accelerator near memory. Could you elaborate on that just a little bit more? How, do you, how did you mean that? Yeah, I mean, you, you can do a lot of that with 2.0. 2.0 already, but from a scale, uh, again, the, the back invalidate feature that was added in 3.0 is, is what really enables uh, uh, much higher, better performance uh, in, in doing the accelerator near the memory, right? Or at least the use cases can evolve from there. And also you can uh, scale that better. So basically that's the main feature in 3.0 that I see that's valuable for near memory compute. Although without that, you, you can do a bunch of stuff with 2.0, uh, but it does require a bit of software uh, involved. But with the back of that, we can move so a, lot, a lot of the work into hardware as opposed to software. 